there are still plenty of people working with XML in JavaScript. So this tutorial is going to be dedicated to loading an XML file with the Fetch API and then parsing it. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. I've done XML tutorials in the past, which I will link to in the description, but there have been enough questions about them that I felt I needed to do another one. In this tutorial, we will use fetch instead of XML HTTP request to load the XML file. Then we will take a look at how we can parse the XML file and access certain parts. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now first, before we go through the process of loading the XML file, let me just show it to you. This is the one I'd like to load. I have this locally on my machine. It's similar to a lot of XML files I've used in the past when I've created courses. So there's a main SCO tag and then topics and pages and subtopics, that kind of thing. And you, we would use this XML file to build out a course is basically what we would do. So let's look at how we can load this and then access certain elements of that. Now, since I'm going to be using the Fetch API, that's where I want to start. So I enter Fetch, and then inside of parentheses, I enter a path to the XML file that I want to load. Now, since my XML file is local, I will enter this as the path. It's contained in an XML folder, and then sco.xml is the name of the file. Now, the fetch API returns a promise. And so the next thing we're going to do is enter the then method of this promise that is returned so we can respond to it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with promises, I have several tutorials on that, which I will refer to in the description section. So we're going to set up our promise dot then and we need to pass in a function. Now I'll just do a regular function. Probably in this case I would normally do an arrow function, but I'll do a regular function just to make it easier for people to see what's going on. So basically the function receives the response from fetch. So we receive that response object. Now we need to do something with that response object so we can get the data out of it. And in the case of XML, we're going to convert it to text. So the first thing we do is return, this will return another promise, resp.text, and use the text method to make that conversion. So this returns another promise. And the way we respond to that is with dot then. And then we need to pass in a function to do something with the data that is sent. And I'm going to enter a data variable to contain that. And then the first thing we're going to do at this point is simply log to the console data so I can show you what that is. Right there, we have it. Now we'll go ahead and save that. Now, I do this next part in every tutorial where I use XML HTTP request or fetch because I think it's important to reiterate this point. So if I were to jump out right now and go to the console from this local served up HTML page, I get an error. Fetch API cannot load. And then it says URL scheme must be HTTP or HTTPS. So basically what it's telling me is that in order for fetch to work or XML HTTP request to work, it needs to be served up from a server. And so when you're testing this type of thing, you want to run a local server on your own machine. Now, there are a number of ways to set up a local server. If you have never done this before and need one method, you can go view the node playlist that I have. One of those tutorials inside of that shows you how to set up a local server using node. 
So I'm now going to jump to the file being served up by a local server I have running. And what we see here is the output of the skull.xml file. You can see that it's listed here. That's basically what we're receiving in response to this. So it's a string that shows the XML data. As you can see, as we move through that, you can see all of the XML data. So that's great, but we want to be able to access parts of that XML file. So we need to do one more thing to this. We need to use the DOM parser that's available to parse this text into something where we can access the individual parts like we would want to in an XML file. So let's go ahead and remove this console log statement and we'll do a little bit more here. So first I'm going to set up a parser object and I create that by using new DOM parser like this. So this creates a parser object for me. And I can use that object to then parse the data into a format where we can access it. So let me go ahead and do that on the next line here. XML doc equals parser. So here's the parser object. Dot. Here's a method we can access. Parse from string. And what am I going to parse from the string? The data that was passed in right here. So we're going to parse that. And how do I want to parse it? We have to tell it a MIME type of what we want to parse it to. And so I want to do XML, and so that would be text slash XML, just like that. So basically, that gives us something that we then can access and work with a little better. So let me, on the next line here, just do a console log statement of XML doc. And we'll take a look at this. So I save that. And that gets refreshed by my server that I'm running. And here's what we're seeing now. We have a document that now we can see that there are different parts which we can access. So now the next step is to begin to access those parts. So I'm going to modify this console log statement. And I'm going to do a get elements by tag name. And the first tag I want to grab, if we look in here, I'm just going to grab this go tag. It's the outer tag. Now, get elements by tag name creates an HTML collection, which is similar to an array. You can work with it like an array. And since it creates that collection, I want the first go tag. There really is only one in there, but it would grab more if there were more. I want to take a look at the first go tag, so that's why I specify a zero inside of square brackets, so that I can take a look at that first go tag. Save that, refresh again, and here's the go tag. And that's what I'm seeing. Now I could use a different tag. I can use the topic tag. There are three topic tags in this file. Now I want to show you the HTML collection that results from this. So I'll save that. Once it gets refreshed, here's my HTML collection. And notice that each topic tag is contained in a separate location. And you would access them just like you would an array. So you could work with the individual topic tags. You could do that with the page tags. You could do that with any of the tags. So that is how we can access individual parts of this XML document once we have it loaded. Now I go into more details in working with this type of XML document and the other commands that can be used. I do that in another tutorial. So if you need more information about how to work with these individual elements, I'm going to refer you to my tutorial, How Do I Work With XML Data? And I'll reference that in the description section so you can link to that. So there we have it. Loading an XML document using Fetch, then parsing it using the DOM parser, 
and that allows us to then access parts of it and use those parts. Now before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. You can follow a link in the description. You can also contribute by visiting my website. And if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all of my courses in the description section. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so. You can hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.